Seth, I'm going to win, man. No, you're not going to win. Yeah, yeah. You're not going to win. I'm going to get to go. I got it. I got it. I got it. Oh, oh, no, fuck. fuck. Damn it. Damn. I've been killed. Oh, shit. you got to respond. Oh, fuck. Oh, my glasses. Always in my damn way you are. God. Hey, it's just a game. It's not real life. Not real life. Now, where are my glasses? Oh, where'd you put your bed? They fell between. Very careful, the only pair I got. The only pair you, you, you got. Well, well, you deserve that, that friggin... Oh, damn it. Oh. It's not my fault you're a cheat. I know you use them cheat codes to get that far in the game. Only during Mario Kart. Mm. Oh, God. You know he's got all the strategy, guys, so he can win the game quicker. Ah, welcome everybody to a brand new movie review where we talk about Ready Player One. And, man, you know what? I this just, is a unique film. It's a unique film. Not only is it a unique film, but I actually really appreciated... I thought, I thought it was really unique from the trailers, and mm -hmm. I thought that I just really was interested in the whole world they were creating... Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I, I was on board to check this out. I mean, where do you want to start with Ready Player One, sir? Well, let's give you a little bit of casting so you know who's in this. You okay. got, I forget the main kid's name, or the main uh, kid. Uh, Ty Sheridan. Ty Sheridan. Yes. Oh, yeah, he played Alex, Alex, or, or Scott Summers in the X-Men, the, uh, uh, uh... Apocalypse. Yep. That's not Apocalypse, yep. And we got Olivia Cook. She was in Bates Motel. She's done quite, she just did this movie called Thoroughbreds. Thoroughbreds. She's done some other stuff. Yeah. She's a pretty decent actress. Pretty bad. Um, You've got Ben Mendelsohn, who we last saw in Rogue One. Not so much care for Rogue One, but, you know, he's a decent actor. He's a decent actor as well. Um, there was one girl from... She played, like, his main security. Or, yeah. Uh, she was in... Uh, oh, she was, was she recently... From? We saw her in the Tomb Raider. She played uh, Laura Croft's roommate. Um, she was Whoa. also, she's also in that show on sci-fi, Killjoys is one oh, of the main yep. characters. Oh, kill, kill yeah. Other than that, I don't really know much of her work other than okay. them two things. Wow, okay. Um, we got a bunch of other, just... Just, just a lot, a lot of great actors in this who all, they all do a great job. They, uh, I think one of the, another actors, but I mean, you just get the voice from you don't see him in the real life uh, version. Uh, T.J. Miller. Yeah. T.J. Miller is in this as well. He's he's great as voice acting in this. And basically, this movie is based on a book. And really? Yes, it is based on a book. Boy, and they're really killing it with these book movies. I mean. I, they, they have, what can I tell you? And I've never read the book. Mm -hmm. But the idea is basically, I believe it it's is... Like well, how long? Say from now, about 30 years. They said it's like 2047 in that movie. Or 45, four, Yeah, somewhere. There. It's like at least 20 years ahead of us. And the idea is basically that the world has kind of gone to... They pretty much just gave up and, you know, they're not trying to solve the problems anymore. They're just like... They're just, just trying to... Survive. Yeah. Is really what they're trying to do. And but, basically the world's been sort of, you know turned into crap practically and the only real thing that people have in their Steve lives the VR. is the VR to the Oasis mm -hmm. where they can literally be anything or anybody that they want. And this is what I loved about this movie is they take so many classic video game current and past and you know oh, and, and, and movie characters I mean we've oh, seen a lot of everybody in this we've God. seen Horror villains. Horror villains. Uh, we've seen we got Michael Myers. Or I don't think we I saw Michael Myers. Michael Myers, but we saw we saw him. Jason. We saw Freddy. Freddy uh, Chucky. <laughs> Chucky, and then like, Chucky was hilarious. You get the Iron uh, Giant. Iron Giant. Godzilla. You, Godzilla. Or, you've got so many people. Even my friend who um, is at work, he said he saw the trailer. He's like, oh, there's there's like some some gunpla and some Gundam characters in here. They I'm got, like, they got I'm pretty like, really? much. I'm like. I mean, they pretty much got any kind of character you can think of it's in this movie. Basically, a smorgasbord of like of like nostalgia here. I mean, we were trying to decide post movie. It's like, who would we be if we were to mm -hmm. enter that? There's so many options. It's so hard to think of Choices, a one character to be. It, it's craziness. And the thing about it is, like, yeah, I love seeing the nostalgia. I love seeing all of these cool little Easter eggs in the mm -hmm. movie. There's a ton of them. But it, the movie would mean nothing if 
if the movie itself and the story and everything the wasn't idea good, behind it. it wasn't good. You can yeah. have as much nostalgia in it as you want, but if it doesn't work, then mm. then it's just nostalgia for nostalgia's sake. I mean, one of the main things I was telling him post movie is like. Get a, a really good 80s feel out of it. Oh, man, the 80s feel from the music to mm -hmm. some of the avatars in here to the way the characters sometimes speak. Uh, it, it definitely has an 80s feel to it. And, you know, what I also really loved about the movie is, again, sometimes I have a real problem in movies where it's just like too much CGI and mm. too much sort of like fakeness and yeah there's a lot of fakeness here because it's VR but I got attached to these characters man yeah and everybody has their own unique avatar in this movie even the, out of the main characters themselves I mean they look I mean at least for the two main characters they look a little bit like themselves but they're like an altered version of what they could have been yeah they're like an, an altered version but what I love about it is that again you escape into this world and again you know you can meet somebody through the vr world and become friends with them and yet never know them in a in a yeah in a personal way I mean, you could sympathize to today's world a lot of people connect through facebook and you never know if that person's really who they say they facebook are. twitter anything like that in fact you know as you and i were talking really we're not that far away from technology like this. We're really I mean, we not. already got VR headsets, like, aka what he's got in his hands right now. Yep. I mean, I would, I mean, I would have to say if we're going to get to that kind of interactive VR, depending on how far they're working on it right now, I'd have to say this kind, that kind of technology from the movie, maybe within the next 10 to 20 years at the earliest. I could see it. I could easily see it a lot, and... You know, and really, if you think about it, people escape through their through their phones all the time. So, I mean, the idea that we're not really connecting anymore with yeah. people on that personal level. And that's sort of the main plot of this movie, between connecting between reality and the VR world. And really, it, it, it talks about humanity. The idea that, look, you know, yes, this is a virtual world, and yes, that, you know, you es escape in some ways, but... You know, you 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 do this because you want to interact with other people. You yeah. want to really be a part of a different type of world. And the fact that the world in this movie is being threatened mm. because basically another company, IOI, I believe it is yep. called, uh, they want to win this challenge and basically um, destroy the the oasis. Yeah, basically really... control everybody by doing that. Doing that and. The idea that within this challenge, you basically get three keys, and once you get those three keys, you control Oasis. You control mm -hmm. the stock. You control everything like that. And I got to tell you, I thought I thought the um, the challenges were really clever. I think for me, the best one was the second challenge because oh, you through, really like that? Yeah, because you go through a classic <laughs> horror film. Yeah, we won't say what it is, but well, it was... can you at least give the the name of. The book it comes from, or okay. the author who did. Yes, it's a Stephen King one. Yes, so you know it's gonna be scary as hell. It was. Oh man, it was fantastic. Especially when a character in the movie has never seen that particular movie, and <laughs> it was just funny as hell. It was so funny. It was so hilarious. And what's great about that again is that you know we've seen the movie. We're like, oh oh my oh my god. We know what's oh, gonna happen. Oh my god. And it was seen, so I'm like, you know what you're expecting, and this person's like, never seen this movie, is, is it scary? Yeah, it's like, <laughs> it's oh, It's a Stephen man. King movie, so movie. you know it's gonna be scary. Come on. Um, it was, it was really, it was really fantastic, the challenges. I really loved the last one, I thought the last one yeah. was, was really fantastic. And, you know, like I said, I think the comedy in the movie works really well. Yeah. I think the action works really well. And, you know, the, the CGI, as I, I said, doesn't look bad. It looks really good. Yeah. There's moments where, like, a CGI character is in a scene that's real. Like, there's physical sets and everything mm -hmm. like that. And it, it blends perfectly. It yeah. works so well. And I'm like, man, they must have taken a long time to make this work because, man, this is like leaps and bounds as far as like technology <laughs> is concerned, man. It is amazing.
you know, some of the quotes that they use for some of the challenges is like, you're using this from old school movies. They're, like, well, for us now, they're technically old school. Yeah, they're technically old school for, for us, but it was so fan fantastic. And I really got to give props to Steven Spielberg, who mm -hmm. directed this movie. He's technically the magic man. He is somebody who has made so many classics and it's so like many... Genie. He rushes, he yeah, he just, the lamp, boom, and boom. he gets, grants the wish. He grants the wish, he does great work. But I do have to admit, recently I feel like his work has kind of been lacking, that magic has not been there as much. It could depend on the project, too. It, could, it can, but I felt like, and a lot of people have asked this question, is Steven Spielberg... Uh, is he washed up? Is he done? Is he, is he not the person that he once was? And... It's not like it's not like back in the day when me and you were very young. You know, he had he had some of his greatest hits back in the eighties and nineties, and you know, yeah, yeah. You know, everybody's gonna get a slump every once in a while. They are, but this should rest any doubts that people have because you just need the right project. You need man. the right project. You need the right people on on board, the material, everything like that, and it shines. And he shines as a director in this movie because he. He goes back to those characters and the things that he loves as a director, and he loves the creative process. And I think when you have a movie like this, which is practically creative wall to wall, he does such an amazing job with, I mean, with it. The and movie, the CGI alone is what probably about seventy percent of the oh movie. Oh man, seventy or eighty, eighty percent, something like that. And he just he just really hit it out of the park. You can tell that this material he had a passion for, mm -hmm. and it shows completely. Yeah, it it was it was beyond my wild wildest dreams. I thought it was fantastic. It mm -hmm. really it really was. No no doubt. I mean, God, there's I can't even really think if there was anything. I mean, there's probably only one minor point that I didn't thought was kind of a weak point. It's like it's the two main characters. She's like I understand, you know, this is supposed to be like a action, you know, hero type type yeah. movie. You know, it's like be trying to create a chemistry between these two main characters. Honestly, there are times when I just didn't feel it between the both of them. You didn't feel the connection? Not really. Okay. Uh, I thought the connection was there. I felt more of a connection through their VR characters than in yeah. the real world. And I felt like they maybe needed to develop it a little more in the real world before... I mean, well, I would, well, not before, but, like, develop it more than they did. I mean, it would have been more interesting if they knew each other for a while, <laughs> then they just, like, go, oh, kind of like you more than I expected. And... Something like that. Yeah. Um, but I still think it's an incredibly uh, effective film. I mean, that's probably the only minor point I could say about the whole film. That's about the only thing I can really think of is some of the connections with the characters. But, again, I love how they subvert your expectations. Like, you think, like, you see this big hulking dude in the VR and you think it's a hulking dude, but it could be somebody else. I mean, there's even a line by main character's friend, just like, you don't know if this person is who they say it is. It could be, like, a 300-pound guy living in his mother's basement. Yeah, you don't Name know. Name Chuck. Name <laughs> Chuck. You, you, you don't know, man. It, it was really fantastically clever. I really did enjoy the, the movie a lot, and... You know, look. As far as I'm, I'm concerned, uh, it definitely is one that that warrants multiple v viewings. I mean, I mean, the last time I seen a movie like this is when me and you saw that uh, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. Re re really, you you compare it to this? Yeah, because it's the same. It's a similar type movie. I mean, even though that one's more of a like a video game. I mean, this is a video game type movie ish. Yeah. But that one was more like video game in the real world. I'm like. Yes, there, there's, there's different. I, I thought this one to me was was incredibly dynamic, man. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of emotion here as well because, you know, look, I, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. At the end of the movie, I'm, I'm rooting for the, the character of Wade. I'm rooting mm -hmm. for, for him. I'm rooting for these characters, and that's a sign of a good movie. If I can, if I can root for the characters yeah. that I'm invested, that means it's a good movie. Well, also, I think for me, is that they do learn an important lesson in this movie. Yeah, don't depend on VR so much. You know, it's not going to solve real life problems. It's not going to solve real life problems. If you want to, you know, yes, you get together with people. Yes, you enjoy 
escaping es the world, escaping the world and everything. You know, like we see at the beginning of the of the movie, people in their trailers and everything, and just escaping. But that that doesn't mean that the problems of the world go away. That just means no. that you're high hiding from them. Yeah, and you're just ignoring it. And me, I was like, oh, I can just escape here. My problems are gone for a few hours. Yes, and to me, the movie has a great message of fight for what you believe in, fight for mm -hmm. what you love. But also, you know, humanity is precious, and we we need to come to, together to solve the problems. I like that message a lot. It's a great message. Oh, it's a fantastic message. I mean, do you have any other thoughts and everything before we give our um, review, sir? Other than doing the rev my review, I'd have to say one of the best parts of the movie is the giant you know, great battle scene near the oh, end. Oh, yeah, I love it. You have so much stuff in there. Oh, man. Talk about Easter eggs. And you know what? Look, I'm not going to lie. We spotted a lot of them, but I'm pretty damn sure we didn't spot all of them. There, the movie, you know, the, you got a massive battle scene, and you just see, like, oh, you go from the VR to the real world. It's like, oh, oh, I got killed. I got to go back and respawn. Yeah, like, like they're like, they're like, oh, and they're like, oh, no, 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 I could have swore I was thinking, like, half of them are saying, son of a bitch, son of a bitch. Yeah, I know, man. <laughs> It's such, uh, like I said, video games are thrill rides, you know, just as they are now. This is just uh, turning it up to another level, and it's a level that I, I would imagine if we get to that technology, I people aren't going to work. Try, you know, I barely they, work now. I barely exactly. work now. Are you I mean, everybody's on their phones. I'm like, imagine in a real world Facebook where you can interact on uh, uh, VR. I'm like. You never get people off those damn things. You would never get anybody off and... You know, you know what's another movie that can sort of relate to this? I mean, it's not a video game movie. Is You remember that movie with Bruce Willis, Surrogates? Surrogates, yeah, with the with or yeah. sort of the first ready. Uh, Johnny Mnemonic. Yep. Johnny Mnemonic, stuff, stuff like, like uh, that. I guess you could say a, a tiny bit. It's not really because this one goes in sort of like supernatural type thing. It was Lawnmower Man. Oh, Lawnmower Man, yeah. I don't see somebody turning into a VR god, so... No. We won't go Lawnmower 2, though. We won't, we won't do Lawnmower shit. Yeah, we won't do Lawnmower 2. So, <laughs> no, but... No, there's some really great sort oh, of yeah. VR-style movies, and this definitely is one of, as far as I'm concerned, the better ones. But uh, what are your final thoughts and grade rating on Ready Player One? Well, like I said, I mean, we pretty much laid most of the points out while we were talking about this. I yeah. mean, like I said, the only thing I thought was the minor thing was the character chemistry between the two main characters. Yeah. I thought it was funny when you do see his friends' avatars, or not their avatars, but the real-life versions of them. He's like, you're, you're not what I was expecting. I was expecting, like, a six-foot-eight guy, you know, muscle-bound. I'm like... <laughs> No, no. <laughs> I mean, I won't spoil what the characters are, but it's just like you're gonna be like, it's like, is that really you? Yeah, like I, I, I love that. Again, that's that's the subverting expectations that I love. But uh, I mean, I, I thought it was a pretty good movie. I mean, hell, I might just go see this again tomorrow by myself. Um, I do recommend it. I mean, there was almost other than that thing I said about the main two characters chemistry. I have to give this one. Uh, probably a solid A minus. Wow, man. Okay, well, you're going. I mean, yeah. the real thing with me was all the avatars you get to see in the movie. I'm like, oh my god. It's so it's so cool, man. It's so cool. Some of those avatars, I tell you. Uh, you know, for me, look, as I said here in the review, I thought the CGI was really fantastic. I got to root for the characters and actually love the characters. I thought Spielberg was really invested in this, and he's really back in a big bad way. Uh, you know, for me, this is easily, I think, a a high A minus. I agree with you. Wow. I think that again, a little bit of the connection with the characters is slightly lost, but again, th those are minor points. And overall, the movie's a blast, and it's a joy to watch. We were in the theater; people were enjoying the movie like hell. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's it's a thrill right? Easily, easily see it more than one time. Absolutely, oh, yeah. yeah. So no doubt. But um, yeah, I'm gonna try to get the key now. So I'm gonna. I, I at least you're not in my way because I really. I could just take you out in the real world. But you wouldn't do that. What I? Oh, jeez. God, God, you gotta 
feel Killjoy, don't you? Yep. Better you better hope I don't send an Easter egg in that movie or in that VR game. You never finish it. No kidding. I I, I suck at Mario. I he can't beat Mario. He can't beat more advanced games. Sorry, guys. You'd be there ten million years trying to get past level one. King Koopa's tough, man. What can I tell you? <laughs> oh, all right, guys. I hope you enjoyed the review. If you did, definitely give it a thumbs up. And we will be back next time for another movie review with less cool VR. Cause, Don't yeah. forget your coins in the game. You, you, you're damn right. You didn't try to stop me. Not yet. <laughs> Take care, guys.